Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the Book of Sports community and around the world. This mic is far too low. Hold on, everybody. Just relax. Just relax. Everybody, just relax. We got another episode of the morning after for you today. There's a lot that happened last night. Among them, the Cubs selling us. Josh told me this morning when I walked in the house, that oh, sucked. That was a crazy game. Soul suckage. I'm not going to lie to you, that sucked. That sucked. <laughs> up 8 We had the Cubs. Yeah, we up took the Cubs. Up 8 0 and they lost. Yeah, we had the Cubs up 8 0. I saw Tatis hit a fucking piss nuke. Yeah, to take the lead. Oh, that was a bummer. Yeah. Can't wow. make that up. Cannot. But it was always UConn. Always. And we couldn't have been more right. And by we, I mean Josh. I thought that they were going to make everyone else beat us, but literally it was announced this morning, last night, that Dan Hurley basically said we were going to let Zach Eady beat us. He was like, if Zach Eady could beat us, we'd let him beat us. We wanted to hold the other four starters to under 18 points combined. Yep. Which is what you said. They were like, you might as well be like, all right, Zach, you're the best player in the country. Come beat us. But the kid can't because he fucking sucks. And did they score 18 points? I don't know. I don't think so. The rest of the team. No. Braden Smith, I think, covered yeah. more yeah, than he, 11. So he might have scored. Yeah. Well, they, he had Look. like, I think he had 28 points. They completely shut down Mayor and Lay or whatever the fuck. Edie I had almost think. 40. He had 37. Really? Yeah. And they had 60 total points. They had 20. Well, because the plan was to let him shoot. It was like, we're yeah. going to let no, yeah, Zach do whatever. I didn't he think wants. that he had that many points. Yeah, I took his fucking rebounds again, dude. It cost me so much fucking coin, bro. It was always his PRA, but I don't know how he doesn't grab a million boards. Because he sucks. <laughs> uh, Dan Hurley said, we didn't get, we didn't care if Zach Eady took 25 to 28 shots to get 30, 35 points. This whole game, game plan was no Smith, no Lawyer, no Gillis, no Jones. Keep that collective group under 18, 20 points as a group. They had no chance to win no matter how well Zach played. There we go. Zero chance. So people are like, hey, tweeting that he sucks when he's got 30 points because oh, the plan was to let him fucking shoot. You were getting flamed for that pick. Dude, yeah. but I loved it. I that loved was also low-key engagement farming. So I was like, he's got, <laughs> I love, I he's got 40 it. points, and I'm going to post this because he sucked. At yeah. The end of the game. <laughs> but, dude, like, I'm sorry. The kid sucks. He's not going to be a first-round pick. Might not even be a second-round pick. Like, the kid is not good. No, he will he's not He's just good. big. Yes. And he's okay. bigger than most big people are. Dude, that was laughing so hard. And here's how you make the cheesy gordita crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Eady next week. But when you look at it, like Dan Hurley was already like, okay, go ahead, Zach. You can have every shot you want. Because you yeah. can you can have 40 points and we'll still beat you by 13. Which, by the way, like I feel like the debate now needs to happen. That's the greatest college basketball team of all time. Dude, Matt have- Painter even said today, or, or in his press conference last night, he was like, normally – you know, you have lock, you're playing against lockdown defenders. He has lockdown defenders coming off the bench. Yeah. Like this was a team that eight guys deep. Yeah. They were playing, but they took out Donovan Klingon. And I looked at my girlfriend and I was like, oh, fuck, we might be done if Klingon's in foul trouble. Like this could, this could cause some problems. Both backup centers came in for UConn, two straight alley oops, out re, out rebending Zach yeah. Eady. Like this team was or is, I think, the best college basketball team of all time. They're going to go down as one of the most underrated teams of all time, I think. To go back, to I feel back, like people aren't going to remember the players. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, pe- like they're not like they don't have like a guy that's like no. a top five pick, top three pick that like everyone's like, oh, this is the reason they won. Yeah. Just they were so good overall. Mm-hmm. I think they'll just get like overlooked. Yeah, ask me in, in a week. Future. Ask me in a week the starting five. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you. I think you'll remember Tristan Newton. He was yeah, pretty yeah, fucking yeah. Special. big Newton PRA. I but like, I'm just saying, like, it wasn't smart. one guy that like did everything for him. Dude, how about Cam Smith airballing that three? Yeah, that hurt me. I, 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 yeah, I tailed. Uh, I had half a three pointer in the second half. Yeah, and I saw you needed his demon. Fig Newton, that was dude, me. and he was the only one that made a three in the first half for yeah, Purdue. They, they were, were like one for seven, yeah. and he was the only one that made it. I was like, dude, we're good going to the second half. He just bro. wasn't shooting threes. I don't know what the bit was. Yeah. I was like, oh, we're down by thirteen. Let's keep fucking driving to the hole. <laughs> like, what is the bit there? No, but I mean, we literally talked about it all all yesterday. I don't want to like go into it into it too much, but. Let's just give a quick round of applause. College basketball is over. I feel like we had a great show. We had a great season. Just want to give it up for college basketball. It's the best sport ever until college football comes back. Then it's college football. Yeah. Um, but again, I mean, we talked about it yesterday. This UConn team, I think, is go down is going to go down as one of the best teams, if not the best team, to go back to back. With by the way, losing your two best players for three best players from the year prior, reloading and going back to back and being as dominant as they were. They beat every team by double digits yep. that they played in in March Madness Dude, last two imagine... years. Twelve and zero against the spread yeah. over two years in March Madness, the hardest tournament 
probably in all of sports for sure. And I have to, I have to do it because I said I would do it. Hand up. Um, my girlfriend beat me in our bracket challenge. That sucked. <laughs> wow, that sucked. She had UConn winning and all that sucked. That That's bet tough. Portnoy made has to go down as one of the best wages ever placed. I one mean, one of the best and one of the worst. <laughs> Why like, one of the worst? Well, because well, just like you're taking a team four to, to one to win the Natty, which is insane. It's like. If you lose that bet, it's one of the worst place bets of all time. Sure. But obviously won. So it's it is one of the best bets but because it just it was so easy. A futures bet. I've never seen a futures bet that unsweaty. No, yeah. They won every, every game, by game more than 10 points. Was yeah. an absolute dominant performance oh, by yeah. them. That was a great Dude, bet I'll say it hindsight. too. Normally, and he said it and then tweeted the video of him saying it, and I like not even kidding, felt the same way. There wasn't an ounce of my body that really thought UConn wasn't going to cover or win that game. So, no, I agree. Like the minute that game tipped off and it was like kind of close and Zach Eady was playing really well, I was not nervous for a second. No. And I don't know what it was. Like as college basketball can be so fickle in terms of UConn could have come out when 0 for 35 and they lose that game. That is literally like, I, I think I tweeted it. That UConn team plays two perfect halves of basketball. To beat them, yeah. you have to be perfect. They yeah. don't go on scoring droughts like we talked about yesterday. Yeah. They don't miss consecutive shots. Like if you saw Purdue went on two five-minute scoring droughts, there was not one graphic that came up on the screen that said UConn was going through a scoring drought. Like they one. play perfect basketball. And to beat them, you have to be perfect. Yeah. And there was nothing about that Purdue team that looked perfect. And when I was watching, it was the first time I was watching a group of college kids that looked like professionals. Like when Purdue had – Purdue had no idea what they were seeing offensively. They had no idea what they were seeing defensively. Like Dan Hurley put a master class on Matt Painter. Like there was not yeah. a second in that game where Braden Smith brought the ball up and knew what he was looking at. And yeah. it was like, oh, there's going to be two help here. Maybe if I dive, there'll be a gap. Like he had no idea what he was looking at the whole game as a point guard. And then the, the, the defensive end, UConn was passing circles around them. Yeah, Guys cutting off ball, on ball, high screens, like – it was insane. It just looks easy. That's like the easy, thing. It's like dude. just easy. And you have to be perfect to beat them, and they weren't perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's the line? Wizards, UConn, opening line. <laughs> On what court? NBA court? Neutral court. But NBA court or college court? Yeah, like it's a stupid. three moved in. because What Jordan rules? Pool, what rules? Like Jordan Poole. Yeah, stupid question. About. What's the difference? Well, the court's smaller and the, the rules the are different, too. Isn't the three moved The three is shorter, yeah. Did not know that. Jordan Poole would be fucking water with the college three. Yeah. Um, Dude, I don't know. I feel like it'd probably be Wizards minus 10 and a half. Yeah, yeah they'd be big phase. Yeah. I think that if you play with college rules and Klingon just allowed to stand in the paint the entire game, they would have a way better chance. But I think so, too. If they played NBA rules, they'd be so cool. I'll tell you what, though, with how bad the Wizards are at defense, I think they would struggle against that. Yeah, they offense. might. Like, yeah, I really they do probably think would. They would, dude. They probably like, would. Jordan Poole would be like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Like, <laughs> I haven't played defense in five years. Uh, I did want to talk about one other thing really quick. So UConn beat every single team they played in the tournament by double digits. Correct? Yes. Just want vocal confirmation of that. Correct. Um, in the Big East, UConn beat St. John's by five. Marquette by seven, Butler by nine, Providence by nine, Villanova by one, Butler by seven, St. John's by four. Wow. There's not a double digit win in there. And we're and we're telling lost. me that we only got three teams in. So the best team that just, by the way, dog walked every single conference they played in March Madness, the SEC, the Big Ten. I don't even know if they got a chance to play a Big 12 team, but they would have fucking punched them in the dick. They might have actually. Did they have to play a Big 12 Stetson. team? Or who did they play in the second round? I don't remember. But either way, the, the team that dog walked literally every conference by double digits and then won the Natty, we only got three teams in. Oh, didn't they play San Diego State? We only got three teams in. Yeah, they did. Three teams. Um, three teams. Since 2000, the Big East is tied for the most championships, and it's not even close with the ACC. Every other conference has, I think, the max is three. Well, I think they have nine. The Big East has nine. Who did UConn lose to this year? Seton Hall by 15. Wow. They didn't Seton Hall, the KU, right? They lost to, I think, was one of them. KU maybe, yeah, early, early. Yeah, and there was one other. They had three early losses, days. yeah. I think one of them was KU because we were, we were looking at it. Oh, Fluffy Bears, how the rest of the conference do? I don't know. The Seton Hall fucking <laughs> won the NIT, and then UConn won the national championship. So I don't think you can find another conference that won a big <laughs> tournament. Well, but I'm pretty sure that's how they did. <laughs> and the Big East is the best conference. Like, I don't even know how we're having a conversation anymore. Like, I don't even know how we have that conversation anymore. After Dan Hurley's speech, I might be on that train. It was Kansas, Creighton, Seton Hall. Creighton, they lost it. So how are we even having a conversation about it? 
There's no conversation to even be had. It's the most dominant <laughs> conference in basketball since its creation. And the whole Requiem bit. Give me a give me a break. Yeah. Give me a break. Also, half the SEC and Big 12 were in the NIT and fucking Seton Hall still won it. So you guys can all suck me. The fluffy the bears, you're killing me, bro. Hold them accountable. The NIT. Uh, it, but you know what, though? <laughs> if if any other conference won the NIT, I bet we're talking about the NIT. I guarantee you. I guarantee, <laughs> you, we are. I guarantee you we are. I guarantee Probably you we are. Not. All right, yeah. So then the best conference, the best tournament in the world. Sorry that a Big East team dog walked every single team. Beat them I mean, yeah, I don't think it's arguable that they were the best conference in basketball this year. Like, I don't know it's if that's not. arguable after they after UConn won and they played every team close in that conference. Like, yeah, you must be getting paid by the Big East, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just uh, that that's the last thing I wanted to say about college basketball. I think the debate is over since 2000. The most national championships tied with the ACC, the Big East is, um, and we've won four of the last eight. How so, m- how many teams have won from the Big East? Just two, right? <laughs> What national championships in the last twenty years, right? Well, just I think if you go back, UConn. Syracuse was in the Big East when Melo won at Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like the last. Oh, I guess yeah. <laughs> what are you giggling at? <laughs> is Mikey saying this while wearing the Providence slides? No, I got <laughs> <laughs> I got my Air Force ones on today. Yeah, no, he's not wearing them. No, I don't got them on. But um, it's crazy that Providence is going to win next year. So just yeah, it's insane. Out there. Um, Easy. We're going to be an absolute. Also, do you think he leaves now after listening to all of his conferences? No, I don't think no, so. not even close. He's staying there. I think he's in for life. <laughs> Love you, Bears. I think he's in for life, dude. As he should be after that. I mean, like, I thought the Kentucky job would be like appealing, but but he, like you got to go for the three P. And if you, you got, win I mean, again, you it's to. if you win again, you're literally you UConn royalty. He already is. You have to. Um, my team didn't reject the NIT. You fucking brain dead bot. <laughs> We played in the first round and we yeah, threw they just six rejected, guys out They just there. rejected to win in the yeah, first round. Yeah, we threw six guys out there and barely played. Sat our like, best player. Um, but, yeah, the Big East is the best conference. I won't even hear it anymore. I won't even have an argument. I won't entertain it anymore. So just so everyone knows, going into the summer, the Big East is the best ba- basketball conference in the world. So now that college basketball is over, what, what are you going to be a merchant of? Are you an NBA merchant? Um, I'm going to try to get into baseball. We're getting into a lot of soccer. We've got – Champions League on today. Should we do what in the world? Should we run the what in the world? Let's do it. Let's talk about what in the world and then we'll get to the slate. What in the world? Mikey and Josh. All right, Josh, what, what happened in the world last night? A lot of it, I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of it was... What happened in the national championship and all that jazz? There was a couple things that I did like last night that I wanted to talk about. Um, first of all, that the eclipse was actually pretty cool. So cool. I don't know so if anyone sick, else was dialed dude. in on the eclipse, but it was actually pretty sick. So sick. Like I was a fan of it. Um, but I mean, a lot of the stuff I liked last night had to do with the Big East, and I feel like we already talked about it. But um, no, what else happened last night? No, Boone Murphy was fucking cake. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> Is he going to do it again today? Dude, he he's incredibly soft, man. He's already considering retiring it. I'm like, <laughs> dude, you lost $10 <laughs> on the first try. Like, run it back. He's like, nah, dude, nah, dude. Um, I did want to shout this account out because it is now my favorite follow on Twitter behind a couple of other accounts. But Jay Kuda white Sox fan he tweets white Sox content and knowing some white Sox fans it's some of the funniest oh, know, shit i've yeah. ever seen in my entire life I've seen him. like it's so just like how bad they are this year is fucking comical like some of the shit that he tweets and like it's like the amount of runs they've scored in april and then it's like it's like <laughs> um the athletics the amount of runs they scored in april and then the amount of double plays the white Sox have grounded out <laughs> and dude, like, kills me it like literally fucking kills me but he's so good did you see morgan wallen Got arrested. Yeah, I did see that. So I'll tell you what, dude. <clears throat> I went to Broadway for a bachelor party. So I was on the street that he was on when he did that shit. And I'll tell you what, dude. I thought the exact same thing. What? Like, it's just balconies when you're up there. Yeah. There's no railings. There's nothing to stop you from throwing shit. And there was a couple times, that, like, you know, I was getting a little fucked up with my buddies. And, you know, we were drinking, we were drinking Twisted Teas because it was, it was tea time. And there's a couple times that I was like, dude, if I really wanted to, I could crush this can and throw it over the top. No one would know. 
Like if I was real, real belligerent and like we were like fucking around, like I could throw whatever I want off this shit. Like there's no one to stop you. Like the security yeah. guards don't really look. There's no railings to stop you from doing anything. None of the chairs are bolted down. So like I could see how that could happen. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you shouldn't do it. Right. I'm not saying yeah. you should have done it, but I could see like I wasn't shocked at all that he did something like that after being there and like seeing what it's like. Cause every bar has a rooftop. Yeah. And the rooftops are just open to the street. Like there's, I'm not even kidding you. It's literally your waist is where yeah. the rooftop. There's just like a sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And like you can literally do whatever you want. Like the, I was on a building that had to be five stories high. No railings, no They're nothing. You high, could literally yeah. throw whatever you want off the top. Yeah. This is in Nashville. Yeah. yeah. Have you been? No. Gotta go. Gotta is it, go. Is it like Bourbon Street on roids or what? Dude, it's the best place to have a beer in America. Why? It just like the vibe no, down is. there it's is just unbelievable. There's like live music at every bar. The bars are like six stories and with like different little bars on each floor. It's so sick. I'll see. Fuck you know about Nashville. No, she knows. Um, <laughs> the last thing I wanted to talk about before we talk about some slate because we got turn on. I want to talk some baseball. I want to talk some uh, NBA and I want to talk Champions League primarily. Um, did you see John Calipari walked his dog in a stroller yeah, yesterday after that. the announcement that he's leaving for Arkansas? Yeah. yeah. What's the bit with people that walking their dog in strollers? I don't understand. My parents do that only because there's coyotes, millions of them, and our dog is a snack to a coyote. Yeah. But that's the only thing I can think of. That or your dog's really old and they can't walk. Literally, of course. Someone said his dog is super old and sick. Walking in a stroller. Dude, we've seen so many dogs turn into snacks <laughs> near our area. And like you hear it at night, bro. They're just getting snacks. mauled. It's scary. Really you can hear it you at can, night yes, dude you can hear all the coyotes just like fucking doing their mating calls and shit and you know they're looking for food and shih tzus turn into snacks oh you have a little shih tzu <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah. sick um but i don't know i just feel like obviously i'm sure the dog is pretty old so you put it in a stroller i've just never liked the move yeah i mean it is interesting i also I mean, have seen people in dallas with fully healthy dogs walking them in strollers when it's hot out it's like okay like what are you like <laughs> what are we doing yeah like you either leave the dog at home or walk the dog. Like the dog is ready for the weather. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and if they get tired, go into the shade a little bit, maybe get some water out. It just also seemed like a really weird move to just put the dog in the stroller after making the biggest announcement of your career thus far <laughs> <laughs> and walk on like the busiest street in Lexington. Apparently Dude, he, he can do whatever the out. fuck he wants. I'm sure he's got plenty of money coming in, but then being like, what do you think about taking the new job? I'm not talking about that today. Yeah. It's like, well, why are you walking on the busiest street an hour after the announcement with your dog in a stroller? Let him live, dude. Do you think that? Let but do live. you think that? Like, just like whatever he wants to do? No, yeah. I think he can just do whatever the fuck he wants. He's Coach I was thinking Coach about Cal. it. I, I, I was thinking about it. I might just stay in the house for 24 hours. No, Why? I'd go out. I, you got a show face. Yeah. But I don't know if you got a show face. I think you'd be like, okay, let's let everyone have their opinions, do whatever. And then I'll go back to living my life. But I guess, I guess you kind of be like, fuck the internet. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. I'm changing my job. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, if you're him, like if you're him, yeah, like who true. gives a fuck? Like I'm about yeah. to go get a bag somewhere else and go try to win somewhere else. That's true. I never thought about it like that, but I guess yeah, that makes sense. I was immediately like, he doesn't dude, just stay in your anything. house for 24 hours. Like there's no harm. Yeah, but why are you out in Lexington? He doesn't own. He doesn't owe Kentucky fans anything. Yeah, no, he like any couple champions. They might think he does, but he doesn't. The amount that he, they paid him. So. Yeah, <laughs> should have won more than one. He won what? One Natty? Two? Yeah, one. One, one. with Anthony Davis and them. Mm-hmm. Was he? He wasn't there with Boogie and John Wall, was he? Yeah, he was. So he won two. So was that him? That had to have been him. Yeah, I mean, if he was there, like AD one and John Wall won. So. Oh my god! Which, by the way, brings me up to my next thing that I wanted to talk about. Guys. Only one. It's officially happening. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but it's officially happening. What is it? The younger generation has gotten a hold of phones, and has gotten a hold of sports takes. And they're starting to tear down our goats. And there's now a take of like young kids that think John Wall was mid. And it's happening to us now. <laughs> I feel like it happened to the generation before us when we started getting phones and talking about sports. And it's starting to happen to us. Because yeah. if there's people out there that think fucking John Wall was mid, you need to get your brain checked. Watch his high school mixtape and tell me. He's Watch crazy. him in college. Dude, just, I bought Zigtex. Those were the <laughs> yeah. most disgusting, worst <laughs> shoes on the planet. And I bought them because he was that raw. Yeah, I had those two, the, the white and red pair. He had his own song before Mo Bamba. Yeah, he did. He did. That's true. They're starting. It's starting. 
it's going to happen now. It's happening to us. I feel like it's happening now. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about it because like, why do I want to defend John Wall to my death now? Like, I feel like he was a crucial part of my basketball childhood. Like, why do I want to just defend him? Dude, I don't know. I feel like I feel the same way. Kind of, a, kind of a mid career, mid career. I don't know about that. That's nuts. <laughs> I, I mean, don't know about that. I I haven't seen the dude do anything in five years. Trent's just reading the chat. Yeah, because he's like a hundard years old. Trent's just a chat whore, dude. Like, <laughs> no, he's just reading not, this chat, bro. trying to it's buy into like, every is, take they got. What has he done for me in the last five years? Definitely because no. you haven't bet on him. Yeah. He has he even shit. been in the NBA in the last five years? Trent's opinion <laughs> on quality of ball player is how many times you've covered for him. It has yeah, nothing absolutely. to do with accolades or like how good you are. If you had like covered a couple spreads for him, then you're like, you're an A1 ball. <laughs> LMNG knows ball. Prime Zero is greater than John Wall. I mean, uh, that's obvious. LMNG don't know. Fucking we ball. know. Do you think that's obvious? What? Prime D Rose over John Wall? Yeah. Dude, we had this debate, and I kind of want to hear your take on it, Josh, because I was so firmly on my side of it, obviously. But Allen Iverson versus Derrick Rose, like there's not a competition, right? Definitely a competition. Absolutely. What do you mean? There's You have Allen Iverson. Oh, yeah, I saw Chelly's TikTok or Snapchat. Like, there's no time. way. Derrick Rose's prime was one year. Derrick Rose's prime was like. It was one year. That's just not true. When you look at the true. stats, it was one year. It was three. Four. He was like the best rookie of all time. And then two years later, won the MVP. Yeah. No, he won the he won the MVP's rookie year. Yeah. No, he didn't his rookie year. He didn't. Yeah, he was no. the youngest, wasn't he? No, he, he was drafted in 2008 and he won in 2011. I don't know if that's... No, that's right. That might I be promise. true. I mean, right. I would trust Josh on that. I would say. trust Josh on that as well. He won it in 2011. But he, he was drafted in 08. Him and Michael Beasley were like... It was like between him and Beasley for the one pick. It was insane. And then Beasley. obviously... Allen Iverson is like... They're not even in the same conversation. Why, though? What do you mean, why? Like, what did Allen Iverson do that? He took the most mid-sixers team of all time to an NBA Finals by himself. I mean, Averaged, like, 33 points a game. Derrick Rose would year. have done the same thing if LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh didn't team up in Miami. <laughs> yeah, but those <laughs> yeah. Rosters, he, had Lou Alde he had Lou Aldane, Carlos Boozer, Joe Kim Noah. Like, they're all, like... Do way better than Dikembe Mutombo at 35 years old and Tony Kukoc averaging 20. Who was their guy? They had a they had a guard that was really good too. Snow, maybe. Yeah, Dude, was... no way we're talking. Eric. No, I, yeah, I think yeah, he was wrong. No way we're talking about Eric. He was Snow. an all star. If I'm not compared to Kirk Heiner, Joe Kim, Noah, Carlos Boozer, Eric, Lou Dang. What's up? Come I mean, on. Come on. Come that's on. a that's a ridiculous argument. What is that? It would be a no contest. No contest. That's that's wild. It would be a contest. I really don't think so. <laughs> Like, I genuinely do not think so. Why? Why? Uh, Allen Iverson was unconscious. I mean, not the time or place for this debate or argument, but um, I just think there's a little bit too much dick riding on Derrick Rose now that we've gotten down the path of Damn. how old he is. And I know the injuries. Like, he's the number one, like, probably the only guy. He's the biggest what if in NBA history. Yeah, for maybe. sure. I think probably in all of sports, the yeah. biggest what if. I also think he's the only guy, including every, like, washed high school athlete that can be, like, if I didn't have that knee injury, I could have been the greatest of all time. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I have to hear one more, like, washed high school athlete that, like, almost played college ball or, like, a washed college athlete that almost played pro ball be like, that back didn't give out or my knee didn't yeah. fucking go. Like, I had so many buddies in fucking high school that thought they were going to go lead to the league if they didn't, like, tear their meniscus. Like, he's the only guy that has that card, I feel like, that has that yeah. pass. Like, a legit – well, he won the MVP. Yeah. He's gonna be he's gonna be the only MVP ever not to be in the Hall of Fame potentially. Yeah, which is crazy. That is crazy. I think is he gonna be in. the only one? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they might put him in. They better. I feel like he might, dude. They might be like, he might have the card to get him into the Hall. Dude, he was a guy like John Wall. Like he came out with shoes. Like he came out with Adidas shoes, which is like nobody was doing. It was like him and fucking Dwight Howard had Adidas shoes at the time. The D Roses. And were everyone sick. was wearing D Roses. They were at sick. least in Chicago, everyone was. I mean, they were sick. Yeah. I remember like Derek, like that was his, his MVP year was a phenomena. Like it was like, holy was shit, insane. this kid is unbelievable. Dude, him going to the rim was like actually the most unstoppable thing of I all I just time. wish he learned how to land. Yeah, he did. It just like, he's too explosive. Dude. That's what it was. He <laughs> his was just body too just explosive. couldn't handle yeah. it. That's what it was. <laughs> his body couldn't handle it. All right, should we serve some slate? <clears throat> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know it's good welcome back 
to the slate surfers. We're serving the slate. We got Trent and Stu, Josh and Stu. Should we do a little recap yesterday? I said the Pirates. Let's go. Remember, guys, I'm learning ball along with you. So if you're betting baseball with me, just know that you're learning ball with me. I don't know ball. So when I'm picking games, like just know that I'm not picking games because I know ball right now. I'm starting to get into it. So you're learning with me as we go. We said the Pirates yesterday smacked. I said the Mariners because I can't stop betting on them. That was a fucking donation. They're moose. They're moose. We said the Phillies. Or I said the Phillies. Yeah, you did. And then Nick said, don't take the Phillies. But I took the Phillies and they beat the Cardinals. I was big. Um, did we say the Astros? I don't think we said anything. We didn't. I don't think we said the Astros. Over was um, oh, we said the Cubs, and that was. A, and then I said the Diamondbacks minus one and a half against the Rockies. So I think we went two and three. Yeah. What I've That's learned in baseball: <clears throat> biggest piece of advice to baseball betters: you have a confident play and it doesn't hit, run it back the next day. Yes, dude. We talked about that every time, dude. On Sunday night baseball, I was so confident that game was going to have twelve runs. Literally, only three runs. Balls. Balls on tape for the game to go over on Monday, literally almost hit in the first inning. That was Rangers Astros, yes. right? Yes. Ten to five. Yeah. So is the Cubs today? So it, it, I think it. So by that logic, we'd go Diamondbacks minus ones, and the Cubs. The D backs. Oh my God, dude! The D backs didn't cover last mm -hmm. night. They didn't even win. No, they lost. Yeah. We had the we. I was pretty firm on the D backs too. That uh, that was the one that I remember. Other than the Pirates being I mean, like, I'm dude, firm this on. might be the matchup we want. Merrill Kelly against Kale Quantrill. Like that's yeah, that yeah. feels good. Yeah, I'm like on that. the over. That feels yeah. good. Dude. That feels good. Over I'm eleven. Shot. You got to dial into overs, bro. They've been hitting at like eighty percent this year. No, well, I just don't know ball, so I need to like I need to know the teams before I bet overs. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, dude, that game's total was eleven. Yeah, we, I mean, well, it's in it's Colorado. In Colorado, right? it's yeah, in course, still, yeah. But anytime Cal Quantz was on the mound, fade the fuck out. Of <laughs> For real. Yeah. Okay. Systems. I kind of want to go back to the Pirates again today. I'll be honest. I just like this team KC this year. Against their I like KC. this team this year. They are good. Um. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that game. To you have no thoughts? Honest. I would take the under in that game. System you take play. the under in that game? System play. Okay. Oh, because it's the Stand earliest game? early game. Okay. Corbin Burns against Brian Bello on the Red Sox. Bayo. Oh, Red Sox hobo, home opener. Do you go the Sox at plus chicken? Are they plus chick? Who's pitching? Um, Bayo. Bayo. And who else? Corbin Burns. Ooh. I know that's tough. That's a tough one. Uh, Do you go the Sox at plus value, chicken? Good value at plus chick with Bayo on the bump. Um, Maybe the Sox plus ones? I could see that game going over, honestly. With those two on the bump? Yeah. I need a Devers yeah. hog. That's all I really need in that game. All right, well, I won't, I won't waste a lot of time on it. Are we fading the Marlins in every game? They're awful, bro. Holy I just want to know. Are we fading them in every game? I, mean, I think we could fade them today. The Yankees minus one and a half. Oh, I love, I love the Yanks today. They have uh, Rodon yeah. against AJ Puck. That dude blows. Dude, so the Yankees minus one and a half. And how do we not keep fading the White Sox? Yeah, who are they? Oh, the Guardians. I don't trust the Guardians. I trust them when they play the White Sox. Narrative. Tim Wakefield veteran knuckleballer passed away uh he was like a red sox hall of famer they're they're uh honoring his jersey pregame in fenway okay. so the socks a plus chick socks a plus chick is i like the socks a plus chick yeah. then i love that actually now that might be the, the play of the day socks a plus chick um what's the deal with the mets why'd they win yesterday someone explain <laughs> to me how that happened are the braves bad what's going on with in atlanta i know strider's out but are the braves bad um yeah. No, they're not. Wait, they're not. What's the line? Atlanta's minus 195. Yeah. After losing. They should have fucking won that game, man. They sold the Fugazi 5. Um, Their bullpen is trash, Peyton. They're trash. I really love the Phillies against the Cardinals again. Back against the wall, fade dog shit poverty. Yeah. Fade the Oakland A's, fade the White Sox. The Rangers are playing the Athletics now. I'm making the Rockies. Run line. The Rockies, too. Just fade them. I'm fading the fuck out of the Oakland A's today. You have Aldi on the bump. Come All on, right. Lauren. Do you guys want my plays? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go the Pirates again. The Sox at plus chicken. I'm going to bet these. I'm going to try to keep it to four or five. The Sox at plus chicken. Yankees minus one and a half. The Phillies. And the Dimebacks minus one and a half. Okay. Two of those are going back to what we had yesterday. And I feel like I just don't. Dude, when I bet on the Padres, they fuck me. When I bet against them, they fuck me. I don't want to do it.
And it feels like Musgrave on the bump used to be a systems. But I don't want to do it because I don't trust the Padres. Pirates, Red Sox, Yankees by two, Phillies, D-backs by two. Yeah. Does well, that, Phillies not by two. Yeah. That Cubs line looks yeah. really weird, I think. I do, I do the too. Two names, like, I agree. I, I honestly have no idea who the fuck Ben Brown is. I don't know either. Like, no idea who that is. I don't know. How about, he's plus 114 against Joe Musgrove. How about Mike Trout this year coming for his revenge? He's is he playing well? Oh, my God. He's leading the league in home runs. Uh, he's up there, up there in batting Check average. Uh, he's killing it, dude. And he chalked Nobu Nerfy yesterday <laughs> with a with a fucking triple. Well, so what are your what are yours? My plays today. The over. What are you look at? Well, what are you looking at on the board? I'm looking at who's tossing turkeys. We know Quantrill's tossing turks and cores. Is he a turk tosser? Absolutely, oh, yeah. the biggest. The over in that game. We got Cole Reagans on the Royals pitching today. I'm too scared to take the plus cheeky Royals and fading the Astros, so I'm taking the under in that game. And then I have the Rangers by two. And Dodgers first five with Glasnow. Wow. Could be a 4 0 MLB card. That could be. Wow. Where did the Dodgers play? Is Glasnow back to being good or what? Yeah, he's good. And the twins strike out a fuck ton. So I took his green gobby Ks. Um, don't be afraid of the green gobbies, chat. Don't be afraid of them. I took one yesterday. I hit a PP entry yesterday with a green gobby. Yeah, they're, they're your friends. Even though the payouts aren't what you want them to be. It's better than just throwing a fucking demon in there and getting shocked. Are you betting on anything else today other than the MLB? Uh, I've got two NBA plays. Wow. I've got – so the Bucks have historically reached a new level of moose shit. They have lost four straight games as double-digit favorites, which has never happened. They're playing the best team in the NBA tonight, and they're only a two-and-a-half-point dog in the Celtics. And they're at home. Um, I know it could be the worst wager of the fucking day, but I'm taking the Bucks plus two and a half. I love that. Yeah, I like that a lot. I also just did Boston one and a half now. Sell, Holy fuck, dude! Boston I see two loves and a half right to sell. Yeah, I got two and a half right here too. Boston loves to sell. Yeah. Too. Uh, so I'm taking that, and then I also am taking the Clippers plus seven and a half. I think that's a lot of points against the Suns, and the Clippers are starting to figure it out, coming off a huge comeback win from like 26 points. Uh, no Kawhi, obviously. I expect PG and Harden to keep that one close in a potential playoff matchup. Dude, I just don't think Dame Lillard has championship winning DNA in him. He doesn't know how to win. We'll see. Like he doesn't win. We'll see when they get to the playoffs. Well, well he like, didn't win. They're you looking give him so bad before, but... though. Yeah, I think they'll be fine. Did you see him working out with that water ball? Yeah. What are, oh, they, what are they doing over there? Is that you that know. quotes me on that or something? No, like, I didn't quote you. I saw it too. <laughs> like, what is he? What are they doing over there? <laughs> like, what are they actually doing over there? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It looked kind of hard, didn't it? It it's did look hard. There. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess do... it, like, works all your arm muscles, yeah. right? But... And probably your stomach. Probably have to... <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like if they had audio on that video, he was he was doing that. He was like... <laughs> Nerfy in 10 minutes? Yeah, I have it. I'm pretty nervous about it. Um, I love the Bucks. I also like taking the Spurs whenever they're a favorite against Moose Shit teams. They're favorite against the Grizzlies today. I like the Spurs minus four and a half. That's a good, that's a good play. Against yeah. the Moose Shit Grizzlies. All right, should we talk a little Champions League before we got to get out of here? Let's do it. We got two games on today. Two great games. On like, great games. When do they start? Um, two o'clock. Two o'clock, yeah. Arsenal, Bayern. The Champions League is back, and I think we should get a little horny with it. That's what I'm thinking. I think it's the over and also and uh, but, but I think it's the over and Arsenal Bayern. I love that. I also think if you want a sneaky goal scorer, who used to literally dog walk the Premier League in goal scoring before he left for Germany? Is it Mr. Harry? It's Mr. Harry King. Dude, his, you're his telling shots me, on PP is green as mom. And you're telling me he's going up against an English Premier League defense again? Dude, I feel like you're telling me Harry Kane's going up against an English Premier League defense again. And oh wait, who's on that right wing of Byron that also used to dog walk Premier League defenses? That I don't know. Leroy Sané. Mm. Oh, I knew that. Manchester City product. Yeah. You're telling me you got two guys that used to dominate the Premier League at the highest level, won multiple Premier League title. Well, not Harry, but Leroy. And now they come up against an Arsenal defense in the Champions League. Why do I want to take Bayern? Dude, why are they plus 400? Why do I want to take Bayern? I feel like it's not a bad bet, like Bayern in the Champions League. 
Why do I want to take Bayern? I wonder what like what the draw no bet is. Yeah, they're plus two sixty five draw. Well, we're in. We'll, we'll keep in mind. We're in London. I understand that, but but there's two guys that aren't going to be rattled by that. Yeah, and one of them is the guy you need. <laughs> I really think it's the over, though. Two and a half, minus 128. I love the over in this game, arsenal Bayern. I think there's going to be goals. I don't think Bayern is what they used to be when they had the Jerome Boatangs and the fucking... Um, oh, my God. What was his name? Matt Hummels. Mm. Remember, he left yeah. Dortmund, too, that little bastard. Um, but they're just not who they used to be. And this Arsenal offense is... This I mean, is. they're clicking. Yeah. They're clicking. They're gross. Odegaard is finally... Do you remember when he got signed? I don't know if you were ever a footy guy, like, really in the culture of footy. Do you remember when he got signed to Real Madrid? I do not. At 16 years old? I do so, not. Martin Odegaard got signed from Norway to Real Madrid at 16 years old, and everyone's like, dude. Like, in his introduction, they made him, like, meet Ronaldo, and they did, like, photos of him and Ronaldo, because they were like, this kid's going to be the fucking future of soccer. And, like, his highlights came out in, like, the Norwegian League, and he was, like, so gross at 16. Ended up not being anything until, like, now. So kind of fucking sick. He ended up being like, they tried to play him and he was just like not good enough. Cause I was like prime Real Madrid, like Ronaldo, Di Maria, like all those guys. And he was just like on loan everywhere. And then he's finally found a hole in Arsenal pause, but dude, he's <laughs> fucking, he's good. And this Arsenal offense is good. They're clicking. And I don't see Byron being able to stop them scoring. I could, I could see this being a two, two draw, dude. I really could see this being a two, two draw, but I really want I don't hate that. And I don't know why, dude. I don't know why. I really, really, really want to take Bayern in this matchup. You could get Bayern plus a half at plus 115. I know. I saw that too, dude. I'm definitely taking the over two and a half. Uh, that's my favorite bet of this game. I think Arsenal, Bayern, you're going to get goals in the Champions League, in London, England. You're going to get goals. So over two and a half, I love that. That I'm for sure putting a large wager on. But in terms of the side, dude... Couldn't tell you a damn thing. I just don't know, dude. I don't know. Real Madrid, Man City. We're in Madrid. <laughs> Shit's wrong. And I got news for you. If you're not taking Man City at any line this year, you're just dumb. Like, I just got, like, I I know this is, like, Real Madrid and, like, Jude Bellingham is, like, the guy. But, dude, I mean, I like, I, they don't put teams together like Man City. No. Like, this team, literally 11 through 15 could all be starters on Champions League teams right now. There's not a single guy in the Man City bench that couldn't be a starter on a single Champions League team right now. Like, I, I don't care what the line is. You can get Man City at plus 150. Yeah. I feel like that's just you have to click that button. Yeah. Who's stopping Halan? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, who in the Who's going to stop KDB? Him? Nobody. Like, I just don't. Those two together are actually fucking insane. Like, actually insane. Disgusting, dude. Probably the best, what, center attacking mid? In the last 20 years, one of them. Probably the best striker center attacking mid duo maybe of all time yeah. when they hang them up. Yeah. Like, what they're doing to defenses is disgusting. And by the way, okay, you go, okay, Jude Bellingham, he plays in the middle now, right? Everything goes through him. Who's Man, Man City CDM that just puts seatbelts on everyone? Rodri. I mean, the guy's fucking disgusting. Yeah. So, like, do I trust Real Madrid? Dude, like, I don't even want to take this over. I feel no, like it I might would... be City 2 nothing. I think I could see it being, like, what is it, two and a half, the over? Yeah, both overs are juiced, by the way. Mm. I could see this being yeah. Man City 2 nothing, and Real Madrid just can't get anything going. I don't know why that why that feels that way to me right now, but it does. It really does. I don't disagree. I, mean, I think it's Man City. Oh, dude, but you know what, though? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it is the over, dude. I feel like you could get like a 2-1 Man City, 3 nothing Man City. <laughs> That's what I was saying. I think I think Man City could put three. That's kind of what I was thinking. Do you want to go both overs? All right, both o both overs in the Champions League. <laughs> All right, fine. Fuck it. Root for goals <laughs> in the Champions League. We root for goals in the Champions League. We take Man City money line, and I don't think we touch a side in Arsenal Bayern until I see the official lineups. Okay. So both overs. Both overs. Pega, you just decided to wake up and bitch today, huh? Why? What is he bitching about? I can't say everything, bro. This will make you feel good about the first over, Mike. So. Arsenal's team total for goals is over one and a half minus 145. So heavy juice on the over there. Yep. And then Bayern, their team total at 0. 0.5 is minus 210. Oh, so you're, that's all you need. You're getting it. You should be getting it. You're, I mean, we should be getting it. <laughs> is Pega shitting on me right now? I can't read the chat. No, Chote's just telling you to sack up. 
And do what? <laughs> sack up and nuke. That's all he ever said. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm sacking up. I'm nuking both overs in the Champions League. I think if you want to talk about prize picks, the way that I see this game going, I think I think Harry Kane's shots is a fantastic look against an English Premier League defense that he's eaten on for his entire career. And keep in mind, Arsenal-Tottenham is kind of a little rivalry as well. People might forget. So this is also kind of a revenge spot for Harry Kane in terms of sunning a team that, you know, they they don't have great blood between. Mm-hmm. Um, I could also see, if you want to talk Real Madrid, Man City, Rodri passes. I think they always have him up on the board, passes attempted. I think the way that this game is going to go, Man City has close to 60% possession, and Man City loves to play from the back, and he's the guy that pulls the strings and gets it to KDB, who then finds Holland on a, on a go. So... I think those two I like in terms of squares if they're up there, but I'm definitely going to have to look a little bit more into it. But that's 11.33, and our time is up. If both the games go over, Pega gets a weak ban. Why? What is he saying? He's just saying you don't know ball. Okay. We could take a sec, too. No one's in the queue, so I also want to bring something up. Yeah, can you please? I was just going through this board. Yeah. There is a prop to score a penalty for all four teams. They're all so what Arsenal's plus 340, Bayern plus 550, Real Madrid plus 425, Man City plus 425. If you take all of those and one of them scores a penalty, you make coin. You covered, yeah. That'd be a fun little bet to sweat. Just take all, I could see all Arsenal the teams Tottenham score a penalty. Being the penalty. That just feels like a sloppy defense somewhere finds yeah. them. And then you win money. No matter you know what, what I mean. Maybe you get two and then you go fat coin. Well, so I will say this. I'm not as dialed as I once was into soccer, but I've really the past couple weeks been getting redialed in because I just I need something to bet on. And soccer is my favorite sport of football. But um, if you're not betting on the Champions League, grow up. Yeah, I mean, it's electric. literally grow up. It's electric. Who would you pick? Just not knowing anything, Trent, because I feel like sometimes you pick soccer and it immediately turns red. So right, who would you I don't pick? know shit about either game. Tell me the first game. Uh, Bayern Munich Arsenal. <laughs> Bayern. Real Madrid, Man City. Man City. Yeah, it's an 0 2 card. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally going to be, I bet Real Madrid and Man City draw and Arsenal wins because I love both of those two. <laughs> that is, that's a nightmare scenario. Have you made a PP entry yet today? Um, yes. Do you want to talk through it for a little bit? Maybe yeah. for like two minutes? I've got uh, both strikeouts for Reagans and Glasnow at, on the Green Gobby lines. And then I've got Mike Trout fantasy score. James Harden, PRA, Sabonis, RA, and Giannis points. That's my six man. Are you going to lock in Andrew Nim Harden and Cameron Mugusty points? Or? Oh, my God. That is today, isn't it? <laughs> it yeah. is today. Mugusty. <laughs> That's such a green job. Mugusty. <laughs> All right. So, here's what I'm going to tell you, Trent. This is the soccer entry that you can sweat while you're on surgical stream. Need it. Harry Kane shots. I actually do love that. I know it's the most popular square on the board, but, I mean, give me a break. I'm in. Oh, wait, but maybe we go Phil Foden shots instead. I just need the shit out, Mikey Green. Go be. Because it almost hit yesterday. Should have hit yesterday. Literally should have hit yesterday if that fucking bot took more than one three. Yeah. That is so disappointing. I'm not even kidding you. I was pissed. You know what I actually love? I mean, I already talked about it, but he'd have to attempt 100 passes. That's just, that feels like a little much for me. 100 passes. Phil Foden pass attempts and Harry Kane shots. All right, I'm locking that two piece in. I'm putting 200 on that. All right, as always, ladies and gentlemen, we end every episode with a little inspiration, a little motivation. Now that college basketball is over, I'm not going to lie. I feel like I don't know what to do with myself. I got to figure out another sport to bet on. I got to learn ball like I've never learned a ball before in sports that I don't really watch. So I'm going to give you a little advice. Just take one step forward. That's what I did this morning. I literally woke up and I was a little depressed. I'll be honest with you, hand up. Because I just love college sports and I love everything about college in general and the athletics. And I didn't know what to do with myself. I woke up today, I saw there was soccer on, I saw there was some MLB on, and I didn't know what to do with myself. But you know what? I'm going to take one step forward. I'm not asking you to sprint, I'm not asking you to jog. Just take one step forward for me, even if it's the hardest thing you have to do today. Thank you guys. As always, you stay right there. We got BTL coming up next. They're going to go through every board, every slate, every player that you need that you're going to bet on today if you want to tail them. And then right after that, we got the surgical stream where Trent's going to see what the community is on. All right? 
Good morning, good afternoon, good night from the morning after. We'll be here tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Love you guys so much. Appreciate you. Closing time. One last call for alcohol. So finish your whiskey or beer.